All right, so as a first example, we're going to use the simple methods for getting numbers, strings, and booleans. And to do that, I have a reader and a writer example programs, and they're really short. Let's see, there's the writer. We looked at the reader before. And an XML file that supports it. Now in here, just as a quick review, we did some really simple things to set the QoS. Uh, essentially, we're just saying strict reliable, and we're allowing for the transports either UDP or shared memory. Uh, defining the types is the next thing, and here I've got it called NSB type, which is numeric string boolean type, and have some elements defined in here for the different members. Uh, and then in the domain library, saying that there's a there is a topic of this type that's registered now, and I can make publishers and subscribers to that. Looking at the the code here, when I write it. What happens is I declare a connector that makes a participant for this application, a DDS participant, using this example XML file to get the QoS settings and the types. And it declares an output of NSB writer on the NSB publisher, which is also defined in here, where I've got NS NSB pub, NSB writer here, and it refers to this topic, which is defined right up here. And that refers to this type. So type, topic, publisher, writer. And all I'm doing here is I get into a loop and I set some values using set number, set string, and set boolean, and then write it. The reader does the opposite, where it does the same thing. It, it makes its own participant. It gets, it, it declares an input using the subscriber and the reader for that NSB type that I'd created. And then in a loop, it takes the values, uh, it gets the length, and then it grabs for each element and prints them. So let's take a look what it looks like when I run it. I've got two DOS windows here and I can say, all right, so there's my writer and we'll start up the reader first. There's reader, here's writer, go back to the reader and it is just publishing and receiving incrementing number, a string that has an incrementing value and the Boolean, which is based on a modulus. Okay, set dictionary. This is another way of doing things and it makes it will return a, well, let's start with a writer, how about? Where we have a writer application, we're doing everything individually. Or we can use set dictionary and make it where it's all in one command, setting all values at the same time. Let's look at the reader. And here we've done the same thing with the reader where we're using get dictionary to get everything into a dictionary and then we, we just reference it by its value. And we'll verify again that it works like it's supposed to. Then we're running the writer. And there's the reader. And it runs about the same. Here it's, it's not a float anymore and the booleans are being shown as true booleans. Now let's try making a different change. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this my number value and replace it from a long to a uint64. So that'll be a large number. And I'm going to use this to illustrate a, a limitation that comes with the set number method. In my writer, I'm going to add in a way of overriding the my number value just using set number. And I'm offsetting it with a very large offset. So it's, you know, one shifted up 53 positions plus the value of i. I'm going to save that and we will run it and then go to our reader. And now we can see it's got a very large number, but look at the last digits. It's, there's some truncation going on, so we're not getting accuracy on the lowest digits. And the reason for this is set number stores everything internally as a double precision floating point number, so some bits are lost to store the exponent. If we go back to my number and do the same thing here where we've got one shifted up 53 plus the value of i, and we eliminate this. Then we can go back to our writer and then back to our reader. And now we're getting full precision where the bottom number is incrementing like it should. In fact, if I go back now to my print function and I say, let's print this as a hex value.
Then when I run the program, now we can see all the bits. You can see it's incrementing like it's supposed to. For the next enhancement, I've added a sequence to my type. It's called my sequence, length of 30, and it's an octet. And in adding support for this in, let's go to the writer first. In the writer, I've just added it to the set dictionary value. And for sequences, they look like an array in Python. So we put that in with some sample numbers. And on the reader side, I just made it where it printed out the sequence as well. Save both of those. I've already run it once before. But let's give it a run. There's the writer. There's the reader. And everything looks like it's supposed to. Okay, as a final change, what I've done here is I've added to get the length of the sequence value. You can use get number, and the notation's a little bit different where you put the name of your element, but you put a hash at the end of it, and that informs it to return the length or the highest written number within a sequence to my sequence length, and then I print it out here. I've made another change to writer, and what that is is I can show how you can set individual values in sequences. And again, it's the, it's the notation that's interesting here. I'm setting using the text string my sequence. I want element 10 updated, and I also make sure that I've added the clear members. So each time it loops around, it clears out all, all the variables, all the sequences. Let's see how that looks when it runs. All right, I'll start the writer, and now go start the reader. And I'll pause playback right here. You can see the sequence length is 10, but there's also an extra advisory message that has since been eliminated from RTI Connector.